Hi, ladies and gentlemen, it's Dr. Julio Navoa. <clears throat> um, I was asked by my friends from uh, Australia to, if I could follow up on my comments related to titanium hypersensitivity. And so this applies to anybody that has surgical clips, specifically in all of the surgical clip gr groups, or anyone that has uh, some questions about surgical clips. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I've added a link on the particular uh, case report that I wanted to talk about. And in general, I wanted to talk about some, uh, basically a, the, the gaslighting and the misconception related uh, to what doctors are telling patients or not telling patients related to surgical clips. Now, first of all, let's start from the, from the, the get-go. Let's start from this. Your doctor should not be placing anything in your body that's not, uh, that, that is not biodegradable. So if your doctor put in a surgical clip without your permission, you already know what my opinion is on that. It should have never have happened. Any defense of that is indefensible as far as I'm concerned. And again, so I could go on a rant for hours on that point alone, but remember, you're not wrong in arguing the fact that your doctor left something in your body that you did not know was going to be left in your body, and there's no excuse for your doctor not having gotten permission ahead of time. So with that said, let's move on. Next uh, is the idea or the, mis the gaslighting uh, concept that surgical clips uh, are just because they're made out of titanium, that they're biocompatible. Now, for some patients, it is not biocompatible. That, that means that they absolutely have a titanium allergy, but there's no testing going on to confirm that they do have a titanium allergy. So then when the doctor puts the titanium clip inside of their body, all kinds of things start to happen. A sensitivity, hypersensitivity of type one, type four, we can go into that all day long. I really don't want to confuse uh, my, my audience on the different subcategories of hypersensitivity. Let's focus in on the main issues here. If you have an undiagnosed sensitivity to titanium, which many people do, and a doctor puts a titanium clip in your body, that's a chronic inflammatory response from the start. Now, let's talk about what doctors gaslight you about as far as titanium being an inert bio biocompatible product. Yes, it's inert in its outside of the body state. Okay, yes, it technically is biocompatible until the immune system starts to attack it. All right, many uh, doctors, many uh, clinicians, many chemists argue the fact that titanium is, uh, and, and it's as pure as it can get because you don't have pure titanium when you're put, they're generally clips are made of titanium alloy. That means it's not a pure titanium product. But let's go back to the fact that if it were pure titanium, Pure titanium, when exposed to oxygen, forms titanium oxide. A very thin layer of a, 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 a membrane is formed protecting the titanium, which, which bonds with uh, oxygen and serves, uh, serves as a protective barrier. That sounds all fine and dandy. Uh, and the, the argument is that when you put a titanium clip inside of your body, it is protected by this membrane, this, this uh, compatible membrane, of, because it, it has mixed with oxygen forming, forming titanium oxide. Here's the gaslighting portion. That has nothing to do with the immune system. Okay, once the immune system, uh, specifically macrophages, for example, see this foreign body, they start to try to break it down. And when they try to break it down, they're causing ionization. That means as they break it down, they oxidize the titanium. It's not long, no longer pure titanium in its purest form any longer, or the alloy if you're talking about that. So what ends up happening is that as it oxidizes, it's, it's releasing ions. Ions are a further foreign body uh, to, the, to the human body, and therefore the immune cells, including macrophages, are, and all of this cascade of the cytokine system are going to go ahead and start attacking the ions. And the ions uh, embed themselves or seep into surrounding tissue and call, can cause a systemic response. That's the point. My point is that you cannot and you do not have a perfect uh, titanium product when you put it in and you don't have a, a perfect titanium product when you take it out. I have uh, attached a link on just one case report and I've, I've read a, a fair number of them. 
And this case report states delayed titanium hypersensitivity and retained foreign body causing late abdominal complications. This is an excellent uh, paper. But basically what it describes is a, is a, is a patient who had uh, titanium uh, left in her body uh, and uh, she started having chronic abdominal pain, which a lot of you complain about. So please read that report. We can talk about it a little bit later, but uh, I wanted to focus in on, on some other uh, uh, tests that may be done. Now, if you have a titanium sensitivity, uh, there aren't any ver really good tests to confirm that, uh, but you can uh, do what's called a, um, a, a MELISA test, which is a memory lymphocyte immunostimulization assay. Assay. Now, that's not available uh, in the United States, but is available in other countries. And you can order a test to see whether or not you're sensitive to titanium, not only to titanium, to other, uh, 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 other metals such as nickel, such as chromium, uh, or even such as uh, silicone if you, can, uh, if you can get the sensitivity, uh, uh, if you can get the lab to do that particular sensitivity test. So what happens is that in the cascade effect of the immune response, you're going to have uh, macrophages and you can pick up different antibodies to antigen uh, 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 responses. Some of the most common are going to be CD4, uh, CD30. So you can do a blood test to see, along with uh, MELISA, whether or not those are higher than normal. So keep that in mind. Again, let's go back to the uh, fundamentals. Number one, a doctor should have never left a, a titanium clip in your body without your permission. Number two, titanium clips degrade over time. Number three, they cause an immune response as they degrade, or because the immune response is attacking the titanium, the titanium is degrading. And the reason that I brought this particular uh, uh, article, again, I'm going to pop this uh, title page for you. And again, I've had it, uh, I have a link there, but let's go ahead and see if we can read that. That's delayed titanium hypersensitivity and retained foreign body causing late abdominal complications. So for all you have been told that you don't have abdominal pain, uh, it's not associated with your surgical clip. They're wrong. And uh, also, this is very, very common with the use of metals and other, uh, other uh, foreign bodies to, to the bones, you, either whether or not it be a hip replacement or whether or not it be a vertebral replacement. And I know I have some friends that follow us because of uh, the, the, the issues that they have with the hips and their vertebral uh, replacements and foreign body reactions. So let me, let me take a uh, show you real fast this. This is what the surgical clips that were removed from this particular patient look like. Now, that is not what the normal appearance of a titanium clip looks like. You can see from the appearance here that there is some oxidation going on on that particular, on all of those surgical clips. So it's not, the titanium does not remain in its purest form. Now, I had a conversation. I said, well, what can you use instead of titanium? Uh, instead of a surgical clip. Now, here's where our technology has gotten ahead of us as far as our, our technical skills. A doctor should be trained to be able to do a procedure without the need of a surgical clip. Okay, the surgical clips are shortcuts to doing surgery. It makes it faster for us, easier for us, but that doesn't mean that it is better for the patient. Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's better for the patient. And as we get more uh, dependent on mechanical devices to assist in our surgeries, we become inferior surgeons to, our, to those that came before us. Many, many surgeons, before these surgical clips were allowed to be used in the 1960s, 1970s, and even into the 1980s, doctors had to loop surgical, uh, loop suture uh, 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 organs, such as when doing cholecystectomy in the gallbladder. So as they they had to be experts at being able to do a loop suture. Now you use a surgical clip, it takes you half the amount of time or a quarter amount of the time, but you lost the skill level related to doing that. And so the doctors become dependent on using surgical clips. Now what's an other alternative besides being well skilled and being able to do a, 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 a loop suture or not suture of a particular bleeding vessel? And that's gonna be, we're talking about bipolar devices such as the end seal device, which I happen to like a lot end seal is a bipolar device where you use it it looks like a, an elongated for all intents and purposes elongated gun and you clamp that on top of a, a bleeding vessel 
you clamp it down and it cauterizes using bipolar uh, electrocartery energy, it cauterizes that vessel. And NSEAL can be used in cholecystectomy procedures. And if you, if you have a bleeding vessel or a larger vessel than you expected, or the bile duct, for example, you can loop suture that particular uh, 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 part of the, of the procedure and avoid using surgical clips. And if you have surgical clips in any other part of the body, you can use devices, the bipolar devices, uh, such as NSEAL, to close the vessel so that you don't have to use a surgical clip. So what is the alternative to a surgical clip NSEAL, for example? That's the alternative to a surgical clip. NSEAL, because it cauterizes your own tissue, doesn't produce a chronic inflammatory response because it's your own tissue, your own immune system is healing yourself, and you're not going to have an inert, biodegradable, uh, hypersensitive metal left in your body, such as titanium or chromium or whatever other portions of the alloy that that clip has to be associated with. So now we know, back to the, back to the beginning. Now we know you should have never had a clip placed without your permission. Number two, these clips are not inert. They do degrade over time and they can cause chronic inflammatory responses as part of the autoimmune, excuse me, autoinflammatory autoimmune syndrome induced by adjuvants. And in that category, we're going to talk about biological implants. And below that category, we're going to talk about metallic implants. And I already talked to you about the, uh, the FDA report related to foreign body, biological responses to foreign bodies. And here's another little tidbit of information. I know there's a lot that I'm throwing out at you. Now, for those doctors that do use surgical clips, if you place, a, you're supposed to place the surgical clip perpendicular to the vessel, okay? But... It looks like a little sta a staple, okay, or a little loop of metal. So when you place the surgical clip on, it's supposed to be dead on like that. Now suppose that you accidentally twist the surgical clip because you got a bad angle. The tips of the surgical clips will crisscross. They will crisscross. And that crisscross of the metal can embed itself against uh, sensitive tissue and also degrade over time. And if you move, sometimes those, the tips of those surgical clips, rather than be lined up together, can cause significant amount of pain and, again, uh, worsen the inflammatory response associated with it. So if you have a surgical clip near your gallbladder and you have still have pain near your gall, where your gallbladder used to be, it's probably, it may be your surgical clip. Or if you have it in your thyroid, or if you have it in your breast uh, from, uh, from having had breast surgery or uh, mastectomy, that's probably what's going on, or maybe what's going on related to your surgical clip. Nevertheless, uh, the there are plenty of people that suffer from sensitivity to any to any metal, such as titanium, or the fact that it's just a, a, a an inflammatory response that your body is is uh, responding to because it's never seen this metal before. All right, so I hope that that kind of touches base. Oh, also one very very important thing because this is another gaslighting point. You may get tested for the level of titanium in your body, in your blood. Okay, now that seems like a reasonable uh, test, but the results don't necessarily correspond to the problem. All right. The reason that you are having problems with a titanium clip or an alloy or, or anything else that's foreign to you is the fact, not necessarily that there's a a level of toxicity associated with that titanium. For example, that happens with nickel, with, uh, with the Eshore, for example. It's not associated specifically with a level of toxicity to the nickel, a level of toxicity to the chromium, a level of toxicity associated with the tin of Eshore, for example. Or in the case of, of, of Eshore 2, nictinol, which is a, 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 a nickel titanium alloy, okay, or we're talking about titanium on, on these uh, surgical clips, it's this. You can have a normal level of titanium in your blood, and your doctor's going to dismiss you. He's going to say, well, you'll, you know, you're not being poisoned by this titanium. That's not what's happening. The fact is that your, your body, your, your immune system is seeing this titanium and is inducing a chronic inflammatory response no matter how small the foreign body is. So, of course, you can, you can understand that if you have a titanium implant for your hip, which is so much larger, it can cause 
so much more problems because of the size of the titanium and the fact that yes, even in the hips, for example, and the perfect example is titanium in the hips that, that degrade over time wind up having an enormous uh, reaction to the immune system, causing brain fog and all kinds of issues, GI symptoms, rashes, and similar. You can understand that because of the size of the implant in your hip. But even a tiny surgical clip, such as the gallbladder clips, can wreak the same amount of problems in certain patients. No matter how small it appears, it's still a foreign body. Your body is still con considering it as an invader of your body. And therefore, the response to it may not be at me toxic metallic levels, but the fact that it's there at all is the reason why you're having the symptoms that you're having. So when, you're talked, when your doctor is dismissing you and saying you don't have metallic toxicity, you're not being poisoned by your metal, you're not being poisoned by the titanium, they're not telling you the whole truth. What's happening is that this invader, this foreign body, is uh, causing uh, an adverse effect on your immune system, and your immune system is doing everything that it can to get rid of it, but it can't because it's stuck there as far as part of a metallic clip or as part as a permanent foreign body that cannot be uh, removed. Now, as far as removing it is concerned, the only reason that these devices are not removed is because doctors are not taking it seriously enough. If you remove a metallic clip, you can use devices such as the end seal, or you can go to old school where you do a loop uh, sur uh, surgical tie, and what you can define it as as foreign body reaction or hypersensitivity, and many insurances will ins insurances will cover it. So I hope that I've uh, branched out a little bit more on what's going on in the gaslighting portion. Don't believe what your doctors are telling you, and from the from the get go, from the very beginning, you know that they, you would have never have agreed to let someone put a metallic clip in your body without your permission. So what does that mean? That means your doctor did you wrong and are still lying to you about what happened and what could have prevented all of this from the very beginning. I hope that answers the question for today. Thanks to everybody that's watching and all of my friends in Australia, which are 16 hours ahead of, ahead of me. They'll probably see this uh, either up and watching at three o'clock in the morning. If not, they'll have to wait until tomorrow. Uh, uh, well, there tomorrow, a few more hours, maybe uh, into, into the afternoon. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care.